Greetings, fellow mortals. I'm not going to stand here and say that I have the strongest feelings possible for Avatar. It was an okay film. It is a pretty film. Pandora is a unique world. It's an odd combination of fantasy meeting science fiction because nothing about this strange alien world is anything but pure fantasy. That's not something that I see a whole lot. At the same time, none of the characters are memorable at all. Plus, the plot doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Everyone makes decisions that doesn't exactly fit what they're supposed to care about and want to achieve. This combination of a great setting but weaker story elements has left me neutral to the whole movie. I have no strong feelings one way or the other. I've always found myself surprised about how passionate people are about such an average story. People either love it or they hate it. There isn't any middle ground. One side only sees the environmental message. That's all that matters to them. Now, it's a message that I actually do like. I do care about our planet, but it feels like people that love Avatar forget an important fact. Nature does not love humanity. Everything in the universe is actively trying to kill us. It's a miracle that we survived this long. There's a reason why our species developed to dominate Mother Nature, because it was the only option when we were struggling to survive on a daily basis. The universe is a deadly place. At every opportunity, it's trying to kill us. That's why I view Pandora as a fantasy planet, because everything is friendly and happy and works in unison. It's just basically the Garden of Eden, just a miracle that can't actually exist in real life, and I love it for that. I don't think that the film's detractors give Avatar that credit. Great world, fascinating concepts, and everything is just so pretty. Even today, I think that Avatar is a good-looking film. They put a lot of time, effort, and money into it. I have to at least respect that. Feel pretty, oh so pretty. I feel pretty and witty and gay. And at the same time, Avatar isn't a movie with much sense, or logic, or consistency, at least when it comes to the storytelling arguments. None of the characters stand out. In fact, I don't know many people that remember that the blue aliens are actually called Navi, at least without pulling out the old Google machine. Those that do remember generally followed up by saying, hey, listen, so I don't think that they remember the species name for the right reasons. So, I can understand not liking this film. In my mind, the movie is exactly in the middle. I remember it, but I can barely tell you a thing that happens in it, and I've never felt the need to go back and watch it multiple times. It's a one and done for me. Of course, that's why I'm surprised by how much money it made. It is the highest grossing movie ever made. It beat Endgame, The Titanic, and Star Wars. It is made all of the money, so there's something about it that people love. Nothing speaks more to corporations and executives than people opening their wallets. So it was no surprise to me that a sequel was made, or that several sequels were planned, or that they'll eventually do spin-offs, cartoons, what-ifs, theme parks, and a lot of merchandise. In fact, I'm shocked that it took this long. Avatar came out in 2009. I wasn't even in high school at that point. Now, I'm an old fart that's closer to 30 than to 20 at this point. I was expecting the sequels to be announced every year until Way of Water was finally released. It feels like I've been waiting forever for something that I didn't even particularly want. Here you are. Because it's not like Avatar is a movie that actually needs a sequel. Say what you want, but it's a story that pretty much wrapped up 
everything. Jack, no, no, Jake. I actually did have to look that up. Jake Soli's story was pretty much over. There wasn't much to tell now that he pushed the military away and settled into life on Pandora. I think that's why it took so long for the inevitable. There was a little bit of artistic integrity with the film, but the call of money is too strong. Few can deny it. Nothing can get an artist to throw away their vision faster than riches and and fame. But wait! There's more! I expect that the only film that will overtake Avatar as the highest grossing film ever is Avatar 2, or Avatar 3, or Avatar 4 and 5, and eventually Avatar 9, Navis in Space. Eventually, a franchise always has to go to space, which is weird because Pandora is another planet, but to the blue aliens, we're the alien planet. So they'll end up on Earth and be like, wow, this is so different. A cell phone? What is this? How does this toaster work? Is there fire on the inside? A reverse fish out of water, if you will. Because they won't have much else to do with those characters by that point. Hmm. Really makes you think. The whole point will be to show how polluted the Earth is, how mean humans are, basically implying that we're a stain on the universe. Things would be better off without us. In fact, half of us should just die, like Thanos, except if Thanos was the good guy in the story and not a homicidal monster. Maybe the Navi will conquer the Earth and start to heal it, or they'll show us the error of our ways and demonstrate that we should be one with nature. You know, right before we all die of disease, infection, starvation, hypothermia, or the billions of other things ready to murder us at any moment. Nobody has the balls to come out and say it and just say, look, 85% of you have to go. Because I don't think that the Avatar franchise, and I mean the alien one, not the element bending one, is going to do anything other than humanity bad. Imagine my disappointment when the main antagonist for the second movie in a row is Space Force. They're back with a vengeance, and boy is that boring. Blah 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 military is bad, blah 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 humanity is bad, blah blah blah. As an artist, I'm above you and most definitely wouldn't get eaten alive with the rest of the 1% if there was a revolution. There would definitely be a place for me and my stories about blue people who live in a magical world where world hunger isn't a problem for some reason. At this moment, it is the absolute perfection of that which has gone before. Personally, I think that it would have been a lot more interesting of a story if it focused more on Zack, no, no, Jack, no, I mean Jake, struggling to live on a planet other than his own, show real problems on Pandora other than pure perfection, have other tribes be wary of Jake, show him have to grow as a leader, he would have to dance around politics, his past, his love for what's-her-face, Natiri, and his duality as human and Navi. That would be a lot more interesting than facing humans again, because that was probably the worst part of the first film. That does not make sense. If you think about it, the humans should have torn Pandora apart. Even with our current level of technology, we could have bombed the hell out of the Navi. The entire fight is laughable just because of bombs. This isn't even mentioning all the sci-fi weapons that they have. The humans in this universe don't seem to care about anything other than themselves, so why not? I always thought that right after my first viewing that these humans should return and slaughter everyone. I mean, not Nothing was really stopping them from killing everything with a nuclear bomb, and it's not like humanity has a history of throwing away grudges. People stay mad about everything forever. People don't forget. Nothing gets forgiven. That's true. So, while it makes sense that Pandora would have to face humanity again in some small way, it does feel like a repeat of a fight that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to begin with. When there are plot holes, writers should either fill them in or distance themselves from them. Not dig the holes to be 
even deeper and fill it with garbage that no one really wants because all the audiences really want is to see blue people frolic around Pandora, explore the planet, and forget humanity because the last thing we need is more people wagging their fingers at us while they sell out. Now, I'd sell out in a heartbeat, but at least I wouldn't act like I'm better than everyone else. I would be honest about it. What do you think you're better than me? What, you think you're better than me? You think you're better than me? Wow, maybe I'm a little bit more passionate about this than I thought I was, but like when I first saw the movie, my emotions and memories will fade because all of these suggestions come from a desire to see the franchise improve. There's a way to make Avatar and Pandora interesting for years to come, but I think they're going to be treading the same ground for a long time time. And it's a shame. Pandora is a unique world with a lot of imagination. It would be nice if it had more unique and thought out stories put into it. Don't think, Remy! But what do you think? Am I completely off base here? How do you feel about the Avatar franchise? What do you want out of the movies going forward? Please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear your perspectives. And thank you so much for watching. If you like my takes on storytelling, please consider subscribing and liking the video. It would really help me out. Also, please remember that I'll be self-publishing my novel, Dance of Frozen Death, at the start of 2023. I hope that you will check it out. I appreciate you. Do not despair.